we're going to Harun Shaikh uh, first, and um, he's going to bring in the global perspective because so far we've mainly been talking about uh, the big five coming from Silicon Valley organizing or infrastructure of, of platforms, but that's not uh, the only scenario that, that's out there. There is other models uh, through which a platform society uh, could be or is already organized, and Arun um, is going to tell us more about that. Thank you, Martin. Um, indeed, that's the question I'd like to raise. Um, it ties in with the previous two presentations. I would like to ask, if we look at all these platforms, what is the type of organization and control behind them? What, what, what effects do they have on power? And so basically what I would like to ask is, who gets empowered by these platforms? Who takes control? Um, and what I would like to present is I think that uh, if you look at different dynamics globally, you can s roughly describe all of them into three scenarios, three different versions of who gets empowered uh, by technology platforms. Um, the first one, I think the most obvious one, uh, the one w that we see here or deal with mostly here, is the power of large industry, private companies, and they take control of platforms internationally. Um, this is, of course, seen in their tremendous unprecedented size. Uh, Facebook recently uh, went through the two billion user mark. Uh, Apple has a market cap that is larger than Dutch GDP. Um, so we're talking here about companies that are powerful in many states uh, uh, globally and uh, have this tremendous reach. Um, Jose actually already described this scenario about the, uh, the power of private industry parties taking control of platforms. So let me just add two things which I think are important about their power. Um, I'd say one, one important thing is the extent to which they are concentrated in global markets. Uh, we know that, of course, from specific, uh, very familiar domains, Apple in telephones, Google in search, Amazon in e-commerce. Um, but also when we see within ICT new markets develop, you see these companies are very well prepared to d dive into them and quickly dominate them on a global scale. So uh, starting from search and social networks, in the terms of mobile advertising, Google and Facebook dominate that market. They have 75% globally of every advertising dollar earned on mobile phones. Uh, but also think of something like cloud computing, uh, not Amazon's core business, but now together with Microsoft, they dominate this global market. So their concentrated power in specific sectors, that's the thing I'd like to note about these, this industry empowering model. And the second thing um, is the dynamic that we're seeing, and I think that is something that is currently very uh, uh, much in sway, is the strength that these platforms have if they move into another sector, a non-digital sector, the, the tremendous amount of fear that they inspire there, the, 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 the kind of impression that they are kind of like an, an octopus that whatever, whatever they put into their reach, it's squeezed, uh, the life is squeezed out of it. Media, of course, an example where we've seen a lot of this happen. Uh, taxis are an example. Interesting what I see currently is, um, uh, it was mentioned already, uh, recently uh, the, the Amazon acquired Whole Foods in the US, uh, which is a mediocre, medium-sized food retailer in the US. Immediately, you saw the stocks of all kinds of supermarket chains globally decline tremendously, about 10, 20, 30 percent. So the, Apple really hasn't proven anything within the field of food retail, but simply showing that this is their focus, that the gun is pointed at this sector, already creates tremendous uh, fear and, and impact uh, and destroys values within other sectors. I think the car sector is another field where we're seeing this. The, 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 the fact that three big German car companies bought Nokia's mapping platform uh, uh, last year is a move that they feel like if we don't get into this mobile technology quickly, we're just going to become the people who assemble the box and all the value of the car is going to go to these uh, companies uh, in Silicon Valley uh, that provide uh, the, the solutions for autonomous driving. So this is, uh, I think, a plausible scenario. We see this happening ar all around us. But I think there are uh, at least two other scenarios possible of who gets empowered by these platforms. Uh, and the second one is actually empowerment of the state. And this is much more common in Asia, but not exclusive to Asia. 
Uh, let me give a few examples of this. Uh, this is, of course, the model, uh, or I would suggest the model used by China. Um, of course, there also are very large private companies, right? Just like we here have uh, GAFA or the Frightful Five or these type of names, that they have BAT, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. They, are the, they, they dominate the market. But these companies are overall uh, in line and following uh, government policy. Um, and the government is already using these platforms. So one of the most interesting uh, developments here is, I think, the experiment that they call Sesame Credits which is an experiment that's based on uh, creating a social credit system. So basically what it says, your, your online behavior uh, is marked. Uh, Alibaba is implementing the, this, this experiment. And this, this mark that you get determines the way you get services. So say, if you're playing games all night, that's bad for your mark, it goes down. Uh, if you uh, buy all kinds of irresponsible stuff, it could, uh, lower your chances of getting into a good university. But on the other hand, if you buy diapers or do other kind of stuff that shows you're a responsible citizen, your score goes up. So this is a very subtle instrument, and it's still in a very experimental phase. But I think it's important, because here we could see the germ of a complete reorganization of the welfare state, uh, which, which also ties in with very legitimate concerns, right? We want welfare to go to people who need it, so let's put in personalized information. Um, but it is a system through which, in a very uh, extreme way, the government could tailor its services and, and uh, uh, nudge citizens in, in ways no government has done in the past. Um, it's not just China going on this track, uh, even uh, uh, talking here about open society, even a democ democratic country like India is also experimenting in this sense. They've launched the Aadhaar system, which is the largest biometric system in the world. Uh, already almost all Indians are in it, so this is more than one billion people. Their iris scans and fingerprints are in this system. Uh, and in, within the Aadhaar system, it's meant as a digital infrastructure to identify individuals and then to link this to all kinds of uh, uh, social services. So this is where you, it's linked to getting your subsidies, getting social security, uh, tax returns, and in the future they want, they're opening the system so they can link your telephone account and basically everything, but in a state-controlled system uh, of identification. Um, Russia, similarly, uh, uh, also uh, I think there is the developments like uh, um, the fact that recently they announced all kinds of US-made hardware had to be taken out of the country and no government official is allowed to touch them. Um, another thing is uh, uh, Russia's uh, two years ago uh, decision that all data that international platforms have on Russian citizens have to be stalled locally in Russia. So. Um, what we're seeing here is that the state also has the capacity, and we're seeing already experiments that they're not just fighting uh, a difficult battle, they're actually getting empowered by the platforms. Moving on to the third scenario, um, and that would be the scenario of a decentralized world, a world in which uh, uh, power is not centralized in either governments or big companies, but given back to citizens. Now, this was, of course, the, the, the original dream of the Internet, and we all said, we've all seen how that didn't work. But I think there are quite a few trends now, and mostly technological trends, but also social trends, that point in this direction. Uh, the most obvious example, and which has gotten a lot of attention recently, is Bitcoin. Um, more interesting than Bitcoin, of course, is, is the technology behind it, blockchain, with the promise to have... Uh, uh, to, to create decentralized ledgers, in that way circumventing all kinds of central uh, parties like banks, uh, lawyers, uh, states. Um, but this, is, I think, is also still just one piece of a puzzle. And if you look at a range of things, I'm not, I don't have that much time uh, left, um, see, but if you uh, just mention them, the whole range of po more powerful encryption, yeah, which is making it more, more difficult for either companies or governments to find out what individual citizens are doing, is another example in this direction. Uh, the rise of mesh networks, uh, providing internet uh, in ways without government control or without companies, but simply by uh, citizens opening up their telephones. Um, the DAO, the Distributed Autonomous Organization, this was actually a company, uh, a new type of company without any employees, just smart contracts. Um, and recently, I think the most interesting uh, uh, development in this field is the rise of ICOs, uh, initial coin offerings. Um, and this promises to be, these are, well, just uh, offerings of digital cryptocurrency, and they're meant to provide 
the, um, the, the motivation for people to work within a decentralized internet. And there's a whole range of, 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 of domains made safe focuses on creating uh, cloud computing without what I mentioned, uh, the way Amazon and Microsoft are doing it now. Uh, Golem uh, does the same thing for uh, computing power. And there's a whole range of domains where ICOs, so these, these, these cryptocurrencies, are incentivizing people to build the structures for an internet that's completely decentralized, that no power holds. Well, uh, let me round that up. I mean, uh, the, um, just to, so I think the, there are these three scenarios. And I think all three of them are still possible. They're, 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 there's, it's not clear that either one of them will necessarily dominate, not even the most powerful currently. Um, I think there's a parallel here with uh, 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 perhaps your work on uh, different organization models of state, market, and commons. Uh, but I think uh, that shows at least the strength of these different types of uh, uh, models. And I think this helps to explain the different types of battles that are going on globally. So whether it's China and Google fighting since 2008 is, I think, two fighting over two types of organization of the internet. When Google tries to um, um, build offshore data centers in international waters, it's also a struggle of industry versus state. Um, uh, and there's a whole range of, I think, different types of conflicts that can be understood through these different models of organizing the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Haroon. So again, I think some really important points. So those three scenarios, uh, the market, the state, uh, a decentralized, civil, it's not if, whether it's civil society or also maybe sort of decentralized uh, entrepreneurs um, that, that could be using those technologies. What I find interesting in your first scenario is uh, where Jose was starting out by saying that if we follow this big tech scenario, then these five companies, they will um, uh, sort of organize the infrastructure of the internet. But what you're saying is that it's not just the internet that, that those platforms are organizing, it's also all kinds of traditional industries like the car industry, which is moving towards maybe autonomous vehicle industry, uh, or, or the news industry, or the grocery industry, right? They're all um, in danger, or, uh, or I don't know if that's the right word, but they all could be taken over by uh, platformization uh, with a strong role of these central